The Minister of Humanitarian and Poverty Alleviation, Dr. Beta Edu, was part of the Nigeria delegation to Onga 78. As a keynote speaker, Dr. Beta Edu engaged the World Economic Forum, WEF, to shape global, regional and industry agendas as regards to sustainable development goals and advancing refugee employment globally. Dr. Edu equally had a meeting with United Nations Population Fund, Assistant Secretary General and Deputy Executive Director on a strategic presentation to address livelihood, gender empowerment and equality and the imperative that no one will be left behind with the transformative goals of the Renewed Hope Agenda, partnering with UNFPA on a larger scale in Nigeria. Joining us now to discuss the progress made at Onga 78 and donors' impact is Dr. Beta Edu, Nigeria's Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, who was part of the Nigeria delegations to Onga 78. Good morning, Dr. Edu, and welcome to the morning show. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. For a moment, I was a bit confused. I saw you in a job. And I was wondering, who is that? And then I saw you, you know, looking different. But welcome <laughs> back. Welcome back from uh, New York. Very quickly. Uh, you know, you, you were involved in some activities uh, in the course of that uh, UN General Assembly, meeting with the officials of the UN uh, Population Fund, and also making uh, a presentation on sustainable goals with regard to employment for you know, uh, refugees and all of that. If you could just take us through your experience and, you know, what you think is the significance of your outing in New York. Um, so the president of Nigeria, President Bola Metinibu, made his first appearance at the United Nations General Assembly as the president of Nigeria. And he um, went with him to that um, UN General Assembly, some key ministers and other government officials who he believed would be instrumental to getting the right support which Nigeria need, and of course getting the right people um, at the table. It was a very, very fruitful um, mission to the United Nations. Um, first, we were with the president and interacted with several other countries that could be of support uh, to Nigeria and partner with us as a country. Of course, you know the president had the symbolic bell ringing where um, he actually closed the um, New York um, market that evening and after which he went to meet with top, top um, private sector um, heads that would be very useful to expanding the business um, and economic space in Nigeria discussed with them. But for me as a person, that was an important meeting. Uh, the president has recently approved um, for us to actually uh, fully go all out to get the presidential humanitarian and poverty alleviation trust fund started. And this private sector involvement in that trust fund was very important. So it was like putting together all the people we needed to see in one room, getting the support from the international businessmen, private sector out there, and even some of the local ones in Nigeria um, were also present in that meeting. So it was seeing everybody, Chevron, Shell, um, Boa, name it, they were all in that meeting and we're happy to uh, meet with them. Beyond this, we had interactions with the World Economic Forum on um, uh, the employment of refugees, uh, seeing refugees as assets to a nation rather than seeing them as a liability to our nation. We have over 98,000 refugees in Nigeria and this is like half of that population because some of them are not registered yet. The registration is still ongoing, and most of them are coming from countries around us that are going through some political instability and other challenges. So we have these refugees in Nigeria, and they can become uh, employable, how we can make them employable and integrate them into um, the system and really tap from them, benefit from them, rather than having them sit down in camps and wait for handouts every other day from government and international partners. There were other very high-level meetings with the UN Secretary General where the President presented the poverty alleviation and humanitarian pitch deck 
to the UN Secretary General telling him that poverty eradication in Nigeria is one of his top priorities. And the UN Secretary General committed to having the UN support Nigeria to address this. We also met with um, uh, Ms. Amina Mohammed, who is the Deputy UN Secretary General. We also met with the Under Secretary General of the UN, uh, Martins Griffith. We met with several other um, heads of UN agencies. We put out our pitch deck to them. We told them the situation in Nigeria as it concerns the humanitarian crisis that's affected over 16 million persons and also the poverty, uh, multidimensional poverty that we have in our country and the need for them to quickly come in and support Nigeria. So it was really, really a very tight scheduled visit and um, event at the UN, but we are happy that we're able to meet with the bosses that control those on ground in Nigeria and we're able to get their commitment. All right, so it sounds like a really successful and packed outing at your first ONGA, um, well, at least as Honorable Minister 78. But with all the things you've said, what Nigerians want to hear is how does this translate to the Nigerian people? What does this mean? in terms of implementation, in terms of alleviating the sufferings of the people, in terms of poverty alleviation for the Nigerian people. So for instance, you talked about the fact that the UN has committed its support for the Humanitarian and Poverty Alleviation Trust Fund. What does this mean? You also talk about resource control. What does this mean? How will this impact? Because we're hearing high level um, stuff and that's really good. That's important strategy. But what people who are hungry, people who need help and assistance from your ministry are looking at is how does this translate to me as an individual? Okay, so quickly, we had meetings, of course, with the World Bank, and very soon we'll be making announcement the new upscale of the Social Safety Net Program, which will be putting funds in the pockets of over 15 million households in Nigeria. And these are tangible funds that can help them to start up businesses, improve their businesses if they are running, and really get them into that social safety net. This will be happening next month, October, in Nigeria. The flag off will happen, and Nigerians would know how they can benefit. Of course, I'm sure you know very well that we have already sent out a team who are in engagement with the Nigerian Governors Forum just to verify this national social register, working with the state and the community level to verify it, and we are going to expand it. So right now we have about 15.7 million households, which amount to about 62 million persons registered under the national social register, we want to verify if they are still in that bracket and if they truly deserve to to get social interventions and then we want to double on this almost immediately so the president has approved that uh, verification and expansion of the national social register to cover all the people we intend to um, work with now i'll break down the u.n agencies even though we have the full commitment from the UN Secretary General and the Deputy UN Secretary General and the Under Secretary General of the UN, I'll break it down into little bits. We have the World Food Program and we have the commitment from them to see that we can end hunger in Nigeria. So we've worked out the modality and the plan and we'll be making it public in an event coming up soon next month where we'll be delivering foods to households all across Nigeria as part of the End Hunger Plan. Of course, the homegrown school feeding and several other nutrition interventions are coming up almost immediately. I'll also use this opportunity to mention the discussion which we have had concerning attending to humanitarian crisis, preventing them working with the security agencies and persons who have been affected, building shelters for them. So that's another project which is starting almost immediately and will be supported by the UN. So people who are affected will get housing, people who are affected will get money for startup and then loans for small, micro, small and medium um, scale enterprises would also be given to Nigerians beginning from October. So these are immediate steps that Nigerians should expect from the ministry as ways to, number one, reduce the tension that comes with the removal of fuel subsidy, and then, number two, try to ensure that we can lift people out of poverty while protecting as many that are at the verge of falling into poverty using the social safety net. Today, we'll be announcing the full um, lawn down of the uh, president's approval 
for the entire social safety net program in Nigeria and our targets and our timelines in an event coming up later today. Okay, a couple of things. Uh, good to see you again, uh, uh, Minister, and uh, welcome back. But a couple of things. Number one will be, what is the effective peer review as regards governance of this trust fund so that we don't hear cases of corruption? Governance of this poverty trust fund. Secondly, the last time you said they were going to use GPS to give palliatives to people. But we saw a very rowdy palliative sharing session all over the country that people were pretty much, you know, haggling things and all of that. It was very, very badly put together. Where's the GPS as regards sharing palliative? Where's the home mapping system, you know, that you talked about before now? Can you talk me through that and talk me about about the peer review for governance of this trust fund so we know how the monies will be administered and how much do we have in the pot? Do we still have that 800 million hitherto loan from the World Bank in the pot already and this will now also be added to with, with other monies we have? Okay, so I'll start from the palliatives. I'm sure you know that the palliatives were not given out by the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and poverty alleviation before we were sworn in as ministers um, just immediately after the full subsidy removal very early in the day the president actually met with governors of the state and um, um, opted to support the state just as an immediate relief cushioning of the effect of fuel subsidy removal and things were sent to states for distribution um, from the government at the state level. So both monies, about five, million, uh, five billion naira, were sent to states. And then, of course, rice and other items were also sent to states just to cushion that immediate effect. So this is what has been um, given out in circulation. And it's part of the lessons which we are learning from. For us, what we are doing right now, like I said, is the verification and the mapping. So we are not just mapping only the houses, but we are mapping where it's like a geographical mapping. Where are poor people staying in each of the states, in each local government, in each ward? Where are the poor people? Um, how can we reach them? Where are their locations? And the food delivery, which we mentioned, will not be done by bringing a heap together and then people come to struggle and trample on themselves and all of those things. No, we are taking an entirely different dimension. And that's what I told you that we'll be working with the World Food Program on so that it can be delivered in a more dignifying manner to people's doorstep in their houses. That's number one. The second one, which you mentioned about the humanitarian, the presidential humanitarian and poverty alleviation trust fund. It is going to have a clear governance uh, structure, right, which involves both the international partners, that's the UN, and the private sector together with government. Remember that 30% of the funding will come from government. The other 70% um, will actually be coming from the international donor agencies, development partners, private sector, other forms of um, innovative forms of crowd uh, funding and the rest of it will make up the 70% that is expected in this fund. And it must, of course, be done in a very, very transparent manner and an accountable manner so that the international community will have the confidence. Countries that will be donating to it will have the confidence to say, this is where our money is going to, and this is what is going to be used for. This, all of this was stated in the pitch deck. It will be presented at the federal executive, the next federal executive council. And once the approval is ready, Nigerians would know. Like I said, it's about building that trust between government and the people that we govern so that they can believe in the government and believe in what is going on and see it for themselves. So all of the governing structures will be spelled out to the chairman and then, of course, the, the person who will be doing the day-to-day -day running, the team on ground. We are really putting together all of these structures, working with the UN to see that the right things are being done. Again, like I said, it's going to be a very transparent process, okay, how, how and Nigerians can join in that accountability process. All right, Minister, how, how many homes, as we speak, have been mapped? And we're going to hold you to account, Minister, because now that you say you've mapped the homes through this GPS system, 
We don't want to hear any, any rowdy way of sharing food to people. At least people should sit down in their homes and get it. So as we speak, how many million homes have been mapped? Since you have 15 million on the state directory. And who peer reviewed... 15.7. 15.7. Who peer reviewed those lists brought forward by the state government? Because that's another question. A state governor can put in people there that are close to him, that are his cronies and all of that. But there needs to be layers of filtering. So who peer reviewed those lists? And how many people have you mapped to coincide with the matching of that list? How many homes have you mapped now? How many million homes have you mapped on this so GPS propagative scheme? Presently, we have 15. So we have 15.7 million homes that presently are on our mapping on the, that's using the geographical mapping on the National Social Register. Like I said again, we want to double this with the expansion that the president has approved. Now, what we are doing now as we speak is the verification process, which carries both the World Bank, the UN agencies, the um, Ministry of uh, Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, the state government coordinating team, and the local community coordinating team because one of the targets is the community targeting one of the process is the community targeting so we are bringing them to the table let them verify for us who are these people where are they are they truly part of your community are they poor do they belong to this criteria that we have stated out on our checklist these are all what is going on presently now we're also working with the ministry of finance and other line ministry, Ministry of Information, those who are going to be helping us in the entire process. We want it to be as transparent as possible. Even the media will be carried along in the entire process. So we'll have even the Arise TV as part of the team. So the civil society organizations will be part of the team so that everybody can peer review and say, okay, truly, these people are actually poor and they deserve to benefit from this. Like I've told them, we have to get it right this time. We can't be dealing with um, political friends and cronies and the rest of it Minister. while we leave the poor people to continue remaining poor. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question, and this is about policy. In 2019, the Buhari administration said it was going to take 100 mil a million Nigerians uh, out of poverty uh, by 2030. That's within 10 years, thereabouts. Now, in 2021, they repeated the same mantra within the context of what that administration called National Development Plan, 2021 to 2025. And then we had all the ministries, including the one you, you had now, uh, doing marking, or, uh, you know, mapping, uh, uh, collecting data. The Ministry of Labor and Employment had uh, something they called Labor Information System. There was a National Social Register uh, that was uh, prepared uh, for the distribution of palliatives, particularly during COVID. But the same Buhari administration left uh, about 133 million uh, people in poverty in less than uh, five years. Uh, so I ask you, how much of those policies, documents, you know, mapping, register uh, that the Buhari administration prepared is your ministry using? Or the Chinobu administration is going to start afresh. And how many people are you going to lift out of poverty between now and maybe 20 years? Maybe your administration, your government, will be lifting out, uh, lifting uh, 200 million out of poverty so that all of us can start jubilating. Okay, thank you very much. So the first point is that government is a continuum, right? Um, there are some data, there are some information which they do have on ground that has been very useful to us as um, a part of foundation. But what we've tried to do is that every data, every policy, every information that we've had, we've had to verify them and we've also had to realign some of them 
to fit with the new mandate of the ministry. Remember, the ministry did not have poverty alleviation as its focal mandate before now. You know the name of the ministry was changed, and part of all of that was to put attention on the point that president needs to meet one of his eight-point agenda, which is poverty eradication. That's why I said poverty alleviation. Now, for a start, we are targeting at least 133 million Nigerians between now and 2030, right? Which is in line with the SDGs um, goal and the commitment which we signed on to in the UN. And that was our clear message at the UN. The UN has said that we, or countries all over the world, should be able to eradicate poverty by 2030. Nigeria is one of the key players, if not the number one player in Africa as it concerns the UN. We have one of our own, Amina uh, Mohamed, as the Deputy UN Secretary General, and so we must show that commitment. But beyond showing commitment to UN, the President is indeed very, very committed and concerned about Nigerians and pulling them out of poverty. Now, the difference in all of this is that we're not going to continue to do things the same way and expect a different result. There are new strategies, there are new um, action plans that is under the Renewed Hope Agenda that has been put out there. And these plans, we have put people in the brackets where they belong. Remember, it's multidimensional poverty. So it's not everybody that is poor as a result of one thing. Some is access to healthcare, some is education, some is a humanitarian crisis, different things. Right, and we have put them in that envelope where they belong, and we're addressing as such. So it's doing things differently so that we can have a different result. And we believe very strongly that within the next one year, we should be able to say at least we have reached over 20 million Nigerians. And it's not 20 million people on paper or 20 million people on TV, on radio. No, 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 no. 20 million people that are verifiable. So one of the things we are bringing into our interventions is the fact that the people should be able to agree that we are going to make this information public for Nigerians so that we don't run foul of the Information um, Act and all of that, Freedom of Information Act and the rest of it. But they need to understand that we must be able to give accountability to Nigerians to say, these are the people who have benefited. Please go and verify who they are. Go and verify whether they are in your communities and whether they truly benefited from this or not. Right? Of course, you know that if you do an intervention for 20 million people, 20 million people might not actually come out of poverty. Some of them might not actually come out of it. But then we want to see that at least the success rate is over 80%. Well, at least one big takeaway from me is that you have promised the 133 million people uh, left behind by the last administration in multidimensional poverty that they will be free by 2030. That's some piece of good news. Okay, uh, uh, so I'd like to quickly ask you next, uh, what about the case of the Empower people? I keep getting a lot of messages that they have not received. I'm sorry if you can hear me, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Minister? Okay, we'll go to a quick break. We'll come back and talk about the plight of the Empower people. I just want to ask the Minister as regards that, because they keep coming, they've, got, they've not got their money. We'll be right back. <music> Welcome back. We still have Dr. Beta Edu, Nigeria's Minister of Humanitarian and Poverty Alleviation. So I was asking a very uh, important question on Empower, because I keep getting a lot of mails. People not being paid Empower. What's happening to Empower? When will these people be paid? Some are saying nine months, are right. some are saying eight months. What's going on, Minister? We need to get this very clear. First and foremost, when we came on board, we found lots of issues and baggage with the entire Empower program. So first, we think uh, more persons were allowed to register on the program beyond the envelope that was provided for the program. Secondly, funds were released for payment of people under NPower. However, these funds were not paid in a timely manner by the um, managers of the funds of the NPower to the beneficiaries. And then the third and final point is that there are persons who are on the payment list who are not supposed to be there, persons who are there, who are not working 
and have not given any services but just believe that once you've been enrolled so you just continue to have payment there are people who their time within the end power has elapsed since a year ago but they still believe that they should continue to get money and so they say it's exit plan exit funds exit payment i hear all sort of things so the first thing we did was to set up uh, a ministerial committee to look into the empire issue which had the permanent secretary of the ministry as the head and of course we had the director of procurement the persons from the empire program ncip national coordinators and all of them were part of um, this committee to look into the issues of the empower i have received the first report from uh the system on ground um when i came in the very first week i came in uh i was given a report that they have paid twenty thousand people and i asked the question twenty thousand out of how many and for which period they said it was for um, October to December of last year that all of those people have been exceeded uh, they have been sent out they've exited the um, program and they are no longer on the program I said good and fine so which people are on the program and why have they not been paid in fact it got to a point where some of the monies were swept off back just because it was allowed to sit for so long um, within uh, the empire program and so these are the issues that we're battling with they are coming they sent the first report like i said i looked critically at it and i've asked certain questions and so they are calling back the entire team today and they would be explaining to us what happened to where right now we have very little funds left under the end bar and those funds will be used to pay up whomsoever um, we believe uh, should be paid after due verification uh, that they are truly registered beneficiaries of the empire because lots of the people who are even sending messages and the rest of it are not even on the empire they are supposed to have left the program since last year since mid last year some of them since september last year however they continue to say we are owed nine months ten months okay. 11 months and the rest of it okay, is Minister. a different ball game so we are going okay. to verify and then try to see how we can pay them off but we are rebranding the entire job creation and power portfolio to offer Nigerians something that is more reliable, more transparent, and people get paid okay, when they should, that note, while they deliver the services that's expected of them. On that note, uh, Dr. Beta Edu, Honorable Minister for Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, we'd like to thank you very much for joining us on The Morning Show.